During the Great Wars, the soldier rode. The first use of airplanes in World War I was for reconnaissance. The airplanes would fly above the battlefield and determine the enemy's movements and position. One of the first major contributions of airplanes in the war was at the First Battle of the Marne where Allied reconnaissance planes spotted a gap in the German lines. The Allies attacked this gap and were able to split the German armies and drive them back. As the war progressed, both sides began to use aircraft to drop bombs on strategic enemy locations. The first planes used for bombings could only carry small bombs and were very vulnerable to attack from the ground. By the end of the war, faster long-range bombers were built that could carry a much larger weight of bombs. Pilots soon found that the best way to shoot down an enemy plane was with a mounted machine gun. However, if the machine gun was mounted at the front of the plane, the propeller would get in the way of the bullets. An invention called an interrupter was invented by the Germans that allowed the machine gun to be synchronized with the propeller. Soon all fighter planes used this invention. With mounted machine guns, pilots often fought enemy pilots in the air. These fights in the air were called dogfights. The skies over a World War I era Europe served as a brutal testing ground for manned aircraft. Though limited by their primitive machines, these knights of the sky went on to achieve some of the war's most extraordinary and often downright suicidal feats of heroism. Aviation was one of the most romanticized elements of the First World War. Fair aces in particular achieved celebrity status both during and after the war and their photographs regularly appeared in newspapers. The French first coined the term off to describe the high-scoring fighter pilot hop off head bowed and the expression stuck. The term ace is generally taken to mean any fighter pilot credited with shooting down five or more enemy aircraft. Lone aerial combat provided an outlet for acts of personal bravery. The aces were seen as chivalrous heroes engaged in honest and impressive one-to-one -one fighting. However, the lives of air aces were often cut short through combat or because of mechanical failure. This only fueled their status as heroic martyrs. Of the eight aces listed here, seven were killed in action between 1916 and 1918 the war died in flying accidents during or after the war while one may be considered an ace with only five victories these were world war one bases shot down 20 planes or more world war one bases were arguably the bravest and boldest of all fighter pilots because their planes were so rudimentary widely regarded as the top ace of world war one the red baron as rick Pippen was known was officially credited with 80 air combat victories. The commander of a squadron of elite pilots, Ripthofen was not an aggressive or acrobatic pilot. He was, instead, a brilliant tactician, often diving from above to attack with the sun behind him. For the brief period of a year, roughly from mid-1917 to mid-1918, the triplane format suddenly came to dominate the world of fighter plane design particularly in Germany. The triplane would have become the mere footnote in the history books were it not for the fact that one of them, the Fokker Drottokar 1, became one of the most famous airplanes of World War I. The triplane configuration was not exactly a new concept at spring. Such pioneer aviators as Glenn Curtis founder of Curtis Aircraft Company and A. E. Rowe founder of Acro, Limited had already built successful triplanes in the United States and Britain, respectively. Italy. Count Johnny Caffernite I. Toledo, founder of Heraplani Caffernite, was producing a series of large, three-engine bombers, including several triplanes. In those earlier aircraft, however, the triplane format was simply a matter of expediency and attempt to compensate for the low-powered engines of the period by building the greatest possible wing area, and consequently the maximum lift, into a reasonably compact airframe. Because speed was less of a consideration in bombers, the increased lift offered by the triplane format made sense. Herbert Smith, however, was adapting the refinement of the triplane concept to fighters. He sought to balance the advantages of extra lift and optimum maneuverability against the inherent disadvantage of increased drag. Another benefit of the triplane format was an improvement in climb rate and ceiling. Since the wing area was divided by three, the wings could be built with a narrower cord in relation to their span. Such high aspect ratio wings produce a very efficient ratio of lift to drag. Anyone who has ever seen an albatross or a sailplane in flight can not testify to the aerodynamic efficiency of long, narrow wings. As a bonus, 
The narrow cord wings above and below the pilot interfered less with his view than the wider wings of a biplane or monoplane. Moreover, the middle wing was mounted in line with the pilot's eyes, so that he could easily see around it. The Siemens Shuckert where SSW tried to create a high-performance fighter by building a triplane with two rotary engines, one tractor and one pusher, with the tail surfaces held on a lattice-like structure. Nicknamed the Fly Agent e. e. Flying Egg, the unusual looking SSW Dropaker 1 crashed on its first flight. LFG Roland built a graceful triplane featuring a wooden clinker built fuselage, constructed much like the hull of a speedboat. Although its D 4 triplane was not adopted by the German Air Service, Roland's unique fuselage construction was later used on a biplane fighter, the D 6, which to go into production in 1918. Ironically, one of the few aircraft producers who was not enthusiastic about building triplanes was Anthony Fokker, a Dutch pilot and aviation entrepreneur who had set up shop in Germany. In 1916, Fokker had lost his initial lead in the German fighter business to Albatross through a combination of stagnant design and poor quality control. By the beginning of 1917, however, Fokker and his new chief engineer, Reinhold Planck, had an entirely new fighter to offer the German air service called the V1 the V standing for Verspannung Slows, or without external bracing the new Fokker was a rotary engine set squid plane combining a streamlined fuselage with plywood candle ever wings. Two versions with inline engines, the V2 and V3, were also built. All of them were so far ahead of their time that they would not have looked out of place among the GVs, Lairds and Travelers at the Cleveland Air Races 15 years later. World War I's most legendary pilot was born on May 2, 1892, into a family of Russian nobles. Growing up in the Silesia region of what is now Poland, he passed the time playing sports, riding horses and hunting wild game, the passion that would follow him for the rest of his life. On the wishes of his father, Krzysztof was enrolled in military school at age 11. Shortly before his 18th birthday, he was commissioned as an officer in a German cavalry unit. After the outbreak of World War I, Erkthofen served on both the Eastern and Western Fronts as a cavalryman and messenger. He was awarded the Iron Cross for his daring trips along the front lines, but as the war settled into a bloody stalemate, he grew tired of the tedium of life in the trenches. In mid-1915, he transferred to the German Air Corps, serving first as a backseat observer and later as a pilot. The switch was anything but smooth. Richthofen crashed during his first solo flight but his determination eventually caught the attention of Germany's top ace, Oswald Bolta, who recruited him for a new fighter squadron known as Jesta II. The color red. One day, for no particular reason, I got the idea to paint my crate glaring red. After that, absolutely everyone knew my red bird. If fact. Even my opponents were not completely unaware. Erkthofen understated the color's effect on his enemies. To many English and French pilots, the bright red plane seemed to make a good target. It was rumored that the British had put a price on the head of the red plane's pilot. Yet when the plane and pilot continued to shoot down airplanes and continued itself to stay in the air, the bright red plane caused respect and fear. The enemy created nicknames for Erkthofen. Lee Petty Roof, the Red Devil, the Red Falcon, Lee Diable Roof, the Jolly Red Baron, the Bloody Baron, and the Red Baron. The Germans simply called him Der Rotkampet Fly, e.g. Er the Red Battle Flyer. After achieving 16 victories, Richthofen was awarded the coveted Blue Max on January 12, 1917. Two days later, Richthofen was given command of Jank Staffel 11. Now he was not only to fly and fight but to train others to do so. At a time when 15 to 20 aircraft kills were considered exceptional, Erkthofen earned his legendary super status and the coveted portly merite metal Der Blau Max, the Blue Max by shooting down 80 enemy aircraft all British except for one French plane. Legend has it that the Red Baron was a chivalrous knight of the air, who shot down aircraft but avoided killing enemy pilots. But is the legend true? In fact, Richthofen was much more of a cold-blooded warrior and a more complex character than his legend would have us believe. In Richthofen's own words from Kasten's book, I never get into an aircraft for fun. I aim first for the head of the pilot, or rather at the head of the observer, if there is one. 
but the flying base also wrote that he felt terrible whenever he finished the mission. For propaganda reasons, the German military wanted Rick Pippen to appear as a hero. During his brief 25-year lifetime, the German flying base Manfred von Richthofen was never known as the Red Baron. That English moniker only came about later. As late as 1927, a book by Floyd Gibbons about the Baron's World War exploits was entitled The Red Knight of Germany, not the Red Baron. Gibbons never uses the term Red Baron in his 383-page book. The need name comes from Richthofen's title of nobility, free of hair, or Baron. Just how and when the nickname came about is a mystery. For many years, Brown was credited with shooting down the Red Baron's father from his soap the camel. But in recent years, forensic and other evidence seems to confirm that Rippiffin was actually killed by machine gun fired from the ground, sometime after his breather engagement with Brown. The entry and exit points of the bullet wound indicate that the fatal shot came from an Australian machine gun unit. Who the actual gunner may have been is still disputed, but there is little doubt that the Red Baron was killed by ground fire and not by Brown or any other pilot.